Hey you guys, how's it going? Desivai here, and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial for you guys. Today we're going to be starting off our tutorial lessons with the 747-8. Um, please keep in mind, I'm not too familiar with the 747-8 just yet, um, but I've learned the basics enough to like show you guys and teach you guys how to how to get it up and running and you know in the air. So basically, I'm going to be explaining our coverage for this lesson. We're going to be covering how to start up the 747 from, from dark and then we're going to go over the basic instruments and then how to set up the autopilot and then how to take it off and get it up in the air and using the autopilot in flight. I know a lot of you have been requesting for an ILS landing on the 747 and don't worry that video is going to come as well. Uh, but for today we're just going to focus on getting up and running and controlling it from the air and you know Somewhere down the line, the ILS will 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 be will be there. Maybe in the next episode after this one or the next two. I can't really put a date on it, but it will be there. I promise you that. Um, for the meantime, I could see you guys a lot, you know, requesting for the 747-8 autopilot videos as well, because you guys are having managing managing issues with the autopilot or something. And I could understand like it's it's different from Airbus. It's uh yeah, it's a little bit different from Airbus and I didn't get it I didn't quite get it at first how to manage the autopilot and there weren't a lot of videos out there to explain it really well. Uh so I had to tinker with it on my own and just figure stuff out before making this video. But I get the gist of it, so I'm now able to explain to you guys how to how to manage it a little bit better. Uh but yeah, um I'm still no expert with the seven four seven dash eight. Again, uh this is my first time in the flight deck of a 747-8 so just bear with me and hope you guys enjoyed this video okay so let's start things off with starting up the aircraft right so I'm going to pull up my checklist over here because I do not memorize the procedures for this there's quite a lot actually so we're going to start off with before starting engine and battery switch. We're going to turn that on. Standby power selector to auto. Right here. Click. This one's this one's off, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just uh I'm going to I'm going to tick these just so I don't get lost. External power on if available. Uh, so they are unavailable so we're gonna turn that on um, and tick that just so I don't get lost APU select selector we're going to switch it to start okay then it goes back to on okay and we're gonna just tick that APU gen switch is on when avail lit um, so I, I, I think we wait for an avail sign or a, an avail light before we're able to actually switch it on. So we're just going to wait a few moments to see what happens. Okay, so we did get two avail lights, so we're going to uh, switch those on now and tick that. Fuel pumps. There's quite a lot, so tick that. All of those, make sure they switch on. I hope you guys are following along, because the 747, you know, it's no joke when starting up. All right. Tick. Oh, beacon, good. Tick. Great. So that's the um, before starting engine. Now let's go ahead and fire up the engines. Starting engine checklist. So let's go ahead and... That's not the, uh, there we go. Thrust levers, make sure they're idle. Tick. Engine force start switch. Um, tick. And then fuel control switch of engine four. Tick. And then we have to make sure it's getting power, which it is over here. You could, you could tell by the, um, the numbers going up there 
And then... Repeat, repeat procedure for engines 1, 2, and 3. So, um... We'll go 1 first. Uh... This one, 1. And then we monitor. See if it gets power. And it looks like it's alive. We're gonna go to engine number two. Uh, where are you? There you go. No, what am I doing? We're going here. Turn on engine number two and then we monitor. There we go. Engine number two alive. And lastly, we do engine number three. Tick. Uh, go down here. Tick. And then we check if all engines are alive. Seems like they're getting power. We're just waiting for number two and three to get to full potential and set settle at 23.2 and while we do that let's go ahead and start requesting our pushback all right so we go to ATC actually I don't like this view put me back to where I was no there you go okay so ground services and we're going to request pushback. And I'm going to release parking brake. Ground Boeing Alpha Sierra 747 requesting pushback. Boeing Alpha Sierra 747 pushback request accepted. Okay, looks like all engines have been stabilized as well. So now we just need to wait for the pushback. There we go. And this is like a, a huge aircraft, so I'm not really too fond of flying it. I don't know why, like, there are a lot of people out there who dream of flying the 747-8 or even an A380. But to me, I'm like, I, I don't know. I just had no interest in flying the larger airliners. I, I want to stick to like 777s, 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 777s triple sevens, A340s. I'm sorry, A350s now. Sorry, we're not in the A340s. A350s, A320s. Those are more my type of aircrafts to fly. It's a bigger plane. A lot more, you know, procedures and checklists and stuff. Thank you. Request pushback to stop. That takes a while for them. Ground Boeing Alpha Sierra seven four seven requesting the end of pushback. Okay, that took a while for them to stop, but this is fine. Honestly, I just wanna, uh, I just wanna get through the Boeing different Alpha panels Sierra, now. Seven four seven request to end pushback received. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, kind of delayed there, buddy. Anyways. Let's now set the uh, set the flaps for takeoff. So in the 74, uh, we want flap flap set to 10 when taking off. So we're gonna set that there, and now I'm gonna show you how to set up the autopilot and whatnot, and explain everything. So we're just gonna go to the autopilot panel. It's in the same location as the Airbus, so you should be somewhat familiar with this. So we have the um, we have the uh, auto throttle gauge over here. So this is where you set your indicated airspeed that you want the aircraft to fly in. Uh, so speed, you have heading, you have vertical speed. Although on the Airbus it's on the right of the altitude meter, but this one it's right in the middle of heading and uh, altitude. Then you have your altitude uh, indicator over here. Now this is uh, to engage the autopilot. So. Yeah, but we're going to be focusing on the basics, just the pure basics for now. And 
we're not going to be discussing ILS just yet. So we're just going to be talking about like how to set up the autopilot and just managing the controls. So just the basics, right? So auto throttle, we'll leave that at on. And we're going to be setting our speed at 200. We'll, we'll go with 200 um, for this flight. You, you could increase it. You could decrease it. Whatever you want. But we're, gonna, we're just going to leave it at 200 for now. And then our heading, we want to set it to the runway heading that we're going to be flying in. And for today, I'm going to be taking off on runway 24. Because we always take off from run runway 24. So I'm just going to be setting up for runway 24. Oh, what did I do? Bank angle. I didn't want to set the bank angle. Let's set it back. Thank you. Okay, cool. So heading to 240, that's the runway we'll be departing from. Altitude, I want to decrease that to about 5,000 feet. Yeah. And then the vertical speed. Um, make sure that's on before you set it. We're going to set it at a positive rate of climb of about um, 2,000. Let's say 2,500. We need to, It's important that you set this up. Otherwise, your aircraft's not going to hold at 5,000. So, in the Airbus, you had to click on altitude hold for you to hold that 5,000 feet. But on the Boeing, you have to set a vertical speed. And you need to, you need to make sure this one's selected. And then it locks in at 5,000 feet. And once it gets to 5,000 feet, it will automatically switch from vertical speed to hold, aircraft hold, which indicates that you know, autopilot is holding 5,000 feet. I don't know it's I, I know it's a little bit you know complicated, but try to keep up. <laughs> um, and yeah, that will naturally turn green, meaning that when you engage the auto throttle, 200 knots will be set for the for the climb, right? So I hope I hope that's clear so far. Um, this is just like basic you know setup of the autopilot. Oh yeah, uh, let's talk about like the different instruments that you know we have on this aircraft. So just like the Boeing, uh, sorry, just like the Airbus, we have your artificial horizon over here. We have the airspeed indicator to the left here. We have the um, the altitude indicator here, and vertical speed indicator over here. So it's pretty much the same as the Airbus, kind of. Here we have the, the, the heading indicator, right? And what's cool about the Boeing is it actually shows you like the airport diagram. So I don't know, that's a that's a cool cool touch in my opinion. Engine monitor gauge and flaps. And you pretty much have it here on the other side as well. You have your gears, standard landing gear here. Auto brakes here. And I need to show you the um, this this part over here so you got the FMC as always same as the Airbus then you have your your throttles your speed brakes the flaps over here on this side your radio control panels over here parking brake is over here pretty much and yeah that's about it for the basic you know instruments of the 747 that's all you really need to know for flight I mean you know just the bare basics so right now I'm gonna go ahead and taxi to runway 24 and we'll get this thing going all right you guys we are just outside runway 24 about to enter the runway but before we take off uh, I'd like to take this time to thank you guys for being so supportive um, on my channel you know views are going up and subscribers are going up and I welcome all of you guys to to the channel and Join my Discord uh, server if you guys have Discord accounts. Links are going to be in the description below. Don't forget as well to leave a like on this video if you get if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Don't forget to leave a comment as well stating what you guys want to see next, what sort of tutorials or type of videos you want to see on the channel. I'll read I'll read them out and I'll even respond to them. And if you guys really want to support me as a content creator, uh, the option to donate. Uh, too much towards my channel is available in the description below via PayPal you know it's not required and I feel really weird asking this from you guys 
But um, yeah, if you just want to support the channel and support me as a content creator, the option is there to donate if you'd like. Again, links will be in the description below of the video. And without further ado, let's get started with the takeoff, right? So with this type of aircraft, we want to be rotating at a speed of around 160 knots is what we're going to set for our rotate, right? We're just going to slowly pull up here. Enter the runway. Uh, we are a heavy aircraft. We're like a massive aircraft. It's kind of hard to turn All right, I'm gonna sweat set full throttle for for takeoff Not even on the center line, but we'll get there All right, so we have good indication over here airspeed is alive and increasing engine seems to be normal Coming at around 100 knots One forty, hundred fifty, hundred sixty. We're gonna rotate here, and we have liftoff. Positive rate of climb. We're gonna set the gears up. The good thing here is I could see like the yoke, right? Whatever. <laughs> Ignore that. We didn't really do ATC chats here. So we're just gonna ignore that. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna turn on autopilot, and how I how you set the aircraft to fly your heading is you need to click on turn heading selector on. So that will basically prompt the aircraft to fly at your selected heading, and we pretty much set it at two four zero, right? So the aircraft is slowly going to turn to two four zero. We have the vertical speed. Um, set to 2,500 we're on climb to 5,000 feet and pretty much once you're happy with the heading if you want the aircraft to hold it at that heading you just have to click on hold right there heading hold so that's gonna hold you at 240 right and we're climb we're on climb to 5,000 so like I said 2,500 is what we set and you can see on the vertical speed indicator over here we are set at 2,500 now as we approach 5000 autopilot is going to to um, level off the aircraft and once it stabilizes at 5000 this green light for from the vertical speed is going to transfer to the altitude hold so on your indications over here on the left side right here you can see that the aircraft is maintaining 200 knots of speed which we have set and you can see here that it's uh, the speed mode is selected on so it's gonna hold us at 200 feet right and adjust uh, adjust the uh, throttles accordingly as we approach 5,000 feet and we have an indication over here that says speed meaning where the autopilot is or the auto throttle is holding our selected speed we have um, heading hold over here indicated meaning that the the autopilot is flying the heading we have selected and pretty soon we're going to stabilize at 5,000 feet and you're going to notice the green light of the vertical speed transfer on to the, to the altitude hold section. And so we're just going to give it time, right? So we're at 4,900 and we're coming across 5,000. And you can see that the aircraft is slowly leveling off, you guys. And that... We're, be, we're pretty much managing autopilot at this point. And there you go. So we're at 5,000 feet. You can see from vertical speed mode, it switched to the altitude hold mode. And we're pretty much flying um, our direction here. We have heading at 240. And we're flying at 200, 200, 5,000, 5,000. Now, how do I, how do I, how do I get the aircraft to turn in heading how do I get the aircraft to increase in height or descend because no matter what inputs I make on the autopilot it doesn't want to follow what you know what I wanted to do well okay let's get to that by simply adjusting the altitude indicator over here you can see that the aircraft is not doing anything I set it to 20,000 feet 20,000 400 so I set it to 20,000 feet aircrafts not doing a thing 
That's crazy. Why? S heading. Let's say I want to fly at 200. Set. Aircraft's not anything. Why? Because your altitude hold is on, your heading hold is on. So basically, when these green lights are 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 on, it's going to hold at your previous setting, which we what we which is what we set before takeoff. These are new inputs, right? So how do we fly this um, this input? Well, it's simple. All you need to do is click turn heading select on right here. Click. You're gonna see it appear over here. Bam! The new coordinates you've, you've inputted: 200, 200, and it's going to turn there. Magic, right? It's different from the Airbus. I know. It took me a while to figure this out on my own because you know there were no videos on this, and hopefully I'll be the first, right? But I don't know. Maybe I just don't look deep enough in YouTube. So, 206. We're leveling off. 205. And pretty soon that's gonna come to 200. And if you're happy with that heading, that's when you could switch on the uh, the heading hold, right? So we're at 201. Let's say I'm happy with this. I I just click hold, and it's gonna hold that current position. Boom. See, we're even at 200, right? It's gonna hold. What about the altitude? So for altitude, in order to get to your selected altitude of 20,000 feet, you need to select the vertical speed indicator. So you could tell that you've already inputted 20,000 feet because it's over here, right here, 20,000 in purple. So if I increase or decrease this, you can see it's registering. The problem is it's not going to ascend or descend until you set this, right? So 20,000 is a little bit too high for this video, right? So I'm going to set it at around 7,000 feet for demonstration purposes. 7.4 uh, is okay, but I just want it flat 7,000. And I'm going to increase my, 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 my vertical speed right here. We're going to switch it to vertical speed, right? And then we bring that up to... As, as high as you want. Let's say I want to increase at a vertical rate of 2,000, let's say 2,500, right? Well, let's increase that. Come on, 2,500. And you can see our indicator is slowly going up, you guys, right? We're, we're increasing in altitude and the aircraft is going to climb to 7,000 feet because we set the vertical speed. That's how you do it. You don't actually manipulate the 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 altitude by just simply setting 7,000 feet on the on the the altitude indicator over here. You actually have to set a vertical speed so that it manipulates the the aircraft to climb to that altitude that you have set. And as we approach 7,000 feet, we're gonna see this vertical speed mode switch from from this green box over here to the altitude hold indicating that it's holding the speed uh, the the altitude of uh of of of, of 7000 which we have set over here you guys i know i know it's it's a little bit you know it's a little bit funky especially when you're used to flying the airbus you know it's kind of a culture shock culture shock when you when you go to a boeing but you know, it's just it's just all about getting used to like certain, you know, certain mannerisms or like habits, right? And I don't want to get used to it honestly. I'm not going to be spending too much time flying the 74 unless I'm, you know, giving you guys a tutorial. But yeah, this is something that I need to get used to as well because I'm personally used the Airbus, not the not the Boeing 74, right? And hopefully when I transfer back to the to to Airbus you know, I don't get lost with my with my principles and my procedures. So as you can see, it's we, we overshot a little bit there, but let's let autopilot do its thing. So you can see that boom, it switched from the vertical speed mode, it switched to altitude hold mode, indicating that it is going to hold this at 7,000. <laughs> Magic, right? Who knew? Now, what about the 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 airspeed? How do you control auto auto throttle? To be honest, I think the system on the 747 is actually much easier than the Airbus. Uh, with the Airbus, you know, you need to set the uh, 
set the 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 uh, what do you call this the throttles to a certain position that's the only time you could manipulate auto uh, auto throttle and stuff with this one you could you guys can see I didn't switch it to any I didn't lower the thrust when we were on climb you know with the Airbus you'd need to switch it from toga to, to climb mode here I didn't switch anything I just let auto auto throttle do the work for me so it's just as simple as you know increasing just like that 240 and it's gonna come up but I don't want 240 let's bring it back down boom easy going back to 200 so auto throttle with the 747 is no issue it's a breeze and we're yeah it's pretty good so yeah that's basically there's really not much to say about the auto throttle of the 7.4 that's pretty much how it's done so again recap before we end the video right again heading we could set it to as much as we want, right? I don't know why it switched that. Keep it there. All right. So we could set it as much as we want, but nothing's going to happen, right? So let's say I want to I want to turn to 150. What do I click, you guys? Turn heading select on. Boom. Set right there. And you can confirm it, right? Aircraft's now turning to 150. It's gonna it's gonna stabilize at 150, and then you could switch on the heading heading selector hold on so that it flies at 150 throughout the journey, or until you want to turn the aircraft. So we're just coming at around uh, 150 over here. 159, 158. Come on, I don't have all day. And you can actually click this at any time. And the aircraft is going to level off at, you know, whatever heading you were flying when you click on heading selector on. Just so you guys know. 152, I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to click on hold so it holds there. And um, now we're going to recap the altitude setting. We're going to decrease this back to 5,000 feet. Boom. Right there. And you can see here it's it's... It's registering your input, guys, but nothing's going to happen until you select your vertical speed. And then we can decrease this. I want a descent rate of 1,500. Aircraft is going to start slowly descending, right, to your selected, to your selected altitude. And it's proven over here. And this green vertical speed indicator is going to come on. And that, that pretty much means you have the vertical speed set. And it's slowly going to go take me down until it reaches 1,500. You know, we're pretty close to 5,000 anyway. So if it acts slowly, that's pretty much normal. Because, you know, we're, we're close to 5,000. But you can see already that the aircraft is descending to 5,000 feet. And once it gets to 5,000 feet, the same thing is going to happen. It will level off. And then it's going to go from vertical speed into the altitude hold. That's pretty much there is to it. Basic autopilot manipulation on the Boeing 747. And that's going to do it for this video, you guys. Um, there's not going to be an ILS tutorial in this one, I'm sorry to say. Uh, but again, maybe in the next episode or the next two episodes released... Um, I'm going to do an ILS on the 747. You guys just need to give me a little bit more time to let me figure out things around the 747. Because again, I'm just as new to this as you guys are. I don't really fly the 747. And when I did, it was way back in Flight Simulator X. And that was the 747 like Dash 400 or something. This is a Dash 8. This is, you know, this is new. So I don't really know the new functions and whatnot. But I'm going to learn it. I'm going to learn it. And when I learn it, I'll, I'll put up a video on it. So you're just going to need to give me time, you guys. But for now, this is what I had for you. And I hope you guys did find it, you know, helpful to you guys. If you guys did like the video, don't forget to, you know, mention it in the comments. Get crazy down there. Let me know how much you like it, how much you hate it, what you guys want to see. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you guys have not already, subscribe and join the colony. And again, you guys, for those of you with Discord accounts, don't be shy. Links to my Discord is going to be in the description below for you guys to, to, you know, to freely join us. And again, if you guys like me as a content creator and want to support me, 
It's not required, but the option is there to donate. PayPal link is going to be in the description as well. So, yep, that pretty much pretty much uh, wraps up this video. Once again, you guys, take care, and I will catch you in the next video.